All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to answer a question one of my students asked me in my multivariable calculus class. Namely, suppose you have a circle of radius r. And it's, let's say it's centered at 0, 0. It doesn't really matter. Then if you take two points in that circle or in that disk, what is the average distance between two points in that disk? How do we sort of find the average distance between the two? And turns out finding the average distance is a bit hard, but because of the square root, but an easier question is find the average distance squared between two points. So what's the distance squared between x, y, and x prime, y prime? Well, it's just, if you want x minus x prime, squared plus y minus y prime squared. So the distance formula is usually with the square root, but here without, we do it without the square root. And notice you can really think of it as a function of four variables. Fy, xy, x prime, y prime equals to x minus x prime squared plus y minus y prime squared. Okay, and the question is how do you find the average distance in other words, what you would like to do, you want to find the average of f over whatever its domain is. And here's the thing. For a function of one variable, uh, to find the average value, you just integrate the function and you divide by the length of the interval. For functions of two variables, you double integrate the function and you divide it by the area of, of the domain. For functions of three variables, you triple integrate and you divide by the volume of your domain. Here, you quadruple integrate because you have a function of four variables, f of x, y, x prime, y prime, dx, dy, dx prime, dy prime. And you divide by what's called the hypervolume of the domain. And I'll Take care of that in one second. So, and now let's just figure out what the domain is. Well, notice x, y themselves are in the disk. So d is just, again, the disk of radius r. And same thing with x prime, y prime. Also in d. Indeed, they are in d. In particular, what is the domain? It's just the disk times the disk. It's just a set of points x, y, x prime, y prime, where x prime is in x and y are in the disk, and x prime, y prime are in the disk. And in particular, you divide it by the hypervolume of d cross d, but that's not very hard because it's just the area of d squared. So the if you want the measure of a cross d is a measure of a cross the, times the measure of d. So what this becomes the area of d is pi r squared, so you're squaring that, and you're quadruple integrating from d to d of your function x minus x prime squared plus y minus y prime squared, dx dy, dx prime dy prime. Okay, wonderful. So all we need to do is to uh, quadruple integrate that function. With the square root, it's very hard to do, but because I removed the square root, it becomes possible. And well, how do you do this? Well, x and y and x prime, y prime, they're in the circle, so you want to use polar coordinates. So you see x, y, they're in the circle of radius r, this or radius r, so you use polar coordinates. x equals to r cosine theta, y is r sine theta, and x prime, y prime, they might be in a smaller disk. I mean, they're in the disk of uh, radius capital R, but uh, maybe for a different radius. So x prime is r prime cosine of theta prime, and y prime is r prime sine of theta prime. So you see theta prime is a different angle, r prime is a different radius, 
And same thing here, we have R and just theta, a different angle. Okay, and so in particular, what we need to do, we need to calculate Calculate 1 over pi squared r to the fourth of the quadruple integral. So let's see, r is from 0 to capital R, and then r prime is from 0 to capital R. The angle theta is from 0 to 2 pi. The other angle theta prime is from 0 to 2 pi. And this becomes r cosine of theta minus r prime cosine of theta prime squared plus r sine of theta minus r prime sine of theta prime squared. Okay, now we've technically we've done a change of variables, so we need to calculate the Jacobian, which means in theory you have to do a 4 by 4 determinant, but it's actually not that bad because it's sort of just a hidden 2 by 2 determinant. So if you actually do the Jacobian, it's cosine theta minus r sine theta, and then sine theta, r cosine theta. But the rest is just zero, because x and y don't depend on r prime and theta prime. And same thing with x prime and y prime. They don't depend on r and theta. So it becomes cosine of theta prime minus r prime sine of theta prime, sine of theta prime, r prime sine of theta prime. So as I said, it looks like a crazy determinant, but it's just a product of two two by two determinant. And if you do that in the end, you get r r prime. So it's sort of like a product of two polar coordinates. So in the end, you have the dx dy, dx prime dy prime, are just the following. We get r r prime, dr dr prime, d theta d theta prime, and then you get one over pi squared r to the fourth quadruple integral. I come to that in a second. So r squared cosine squared theta times r r prime. So it becomes r cubed r prime cosine squared theta minus 2 r r prime r r prime. So r squared r prime squared uh, cosine theta cosine theta prime plus the same thing with r prime. So in this case, r prime squared times r prime. So r prime cubed. We still have this r and then cosine squared theta prime. And you do the whole shebang with sine, so r prime, r cubed r prime, sine squared of theta, minus 2 r squared, r prime squared, uh, sine of theta, sine of theta prime, plus r prime cubed, r sine squared of theta prime, and you do you know, all, all our drs, etc., etc. Okay. I know, it looks like a horrible expression, and if we had square roots, it would have been a nightmare. But, here's the thing. So 1 over pi squared r to the 4. First of all, here you have cosine squared plus sine squared. So this actually simplifies just to r cubed r prime. Same thing here, r prime cubed r. And now here's the thing. So notice they're all independent of each other. In particular, if you integrate cosine of theta, you get sine of theta. But what's important is that you integrate it from 0 to 2 pi. So it becomes sine of 2 pi minus sine of theta, the sine of 0, which disappears. So this disappears and this disappears. And we're just left with this expression. So dr dr prime d theta d theta prime from, z from 0 to r, 0 to r, r, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2 pi. And we're left, let's see, with uh, 1 over pi squared r to the 4th. 
Let's integrate r cubed, so it becomes r to the 4 over 4, and then r prime squared over 2, and no thetas, so it's just times 2 pi times 2 pi. And same thing with r prime, so r prime to the 4 over 4, r squared over 2, and 2 pi, 2 pi. And remember, it, uh, everything goes from 0 to r, 0 to r, 0 to r. And again, it's a, it's a quadruple integral, right? So it looks horrible, but it turns out it's quite nice. Then what we get is 1 over pi squared r to the fourth. And then we get, here's the fun part, r to the fourth over 4, r squared over 2, 4 pi squared, plus r to the 4 over 4, r squared over 2, 4 pi squared. Okay. The fours cancel out. So may the fours be with you or not. So 1 over pi squared r to the fourth. So r to the 6 over 2 plus r to the 6 over 2 and that becomes 1 over pi squared r to the 4th times r to the 6 so there should be some yeah sorry I forgot about the pi squared here so pi squared pi squared and then pi squared okay. so in fact those cancel out as well and in the end we get the nice answer that it's r squared and so in particular, the, if you take two random points on the circle, the average distance squared is just r squared. And that's sort of interesting because look, the smallest distance is 0, 0. Sorry, the smallest distance squared is 0, 0. The biggest distance squared is r minus r, so r plus r, so 2r squared, which becomes 4r squared. So somehow the distance squared is between 0 and 4 r squared and we're sort of like in the, the one quarter zone or something. And here's the cool thing, we can do the same thing with the square and in fact I think it's a bit easier. So let's, since we're having so much fun, let's do the square part. And let's do a square in two dimensions of side length r. Then again, if you take two points, x, y, and x prime, y prime. And by the way, I forgot to say, for the sphere, you can also do it in three dimensions and higher dimensions, but it's more complicated because you use spherical coordinates and uh, hyperspherical coordinates. But here, for the square, it's much easier. No polar coordinates business. So again, what do you do? You quadruple integrate. What is the distance squared? It's sort of like x minus x prime squared plus y minus y prime squared dx, dx prime, dy, dy prime from 0 to r, from 0 to r, from 0 to r, from 0 to r. And you divide it by the area of the square, square, because x, y are in the square, x prime, y prime are in the square, so 1 over r squared squared. And so now let's evaluate that. So quadruple integral of x squared minus 2x, x prime plus x prime squared plus y squared minus 2y, y prime plus y prime squared dx dx prime dy dy prime and here's the thing this term is completely symmetric with this term so basically we'll just calculate this term and multiply it by 2 so it's just 2 times integral from 0 to r to the 4th again everything from 0 to r of x squared minus 2x x prime plus x prime squared dx dx prime dy dy prime and then let's see it's 2 over r to the fourth 
Again, there's no y or y prime here, so you multiply by r and r, and you're just left with, let's see, the integral of x cubed over 3 from 0 to r, and then there's no x prime, so you multiply it by r, and then minus x squared, and then x prime squared over 2, and again from 0 to r and 0 to r, and x prime cubed over 3 from 0 to r, and then there's no x, so you multiply it by r, and then let's see what this whole junk becomes. So 2r squared over r to the 4th, and then let's see, this becomes r to the 4th over 3. So r cubed over 3 times r, so r to the 4th, and then r squared, so minus r squared, r squared over 2, and plus r to the 4th over 3. Again, just a symmetric term. And then, let's see, this simplifies then to 2 over r squared, and then r to the 4th over 6, and that just becomes r squared over 3. So the average distance between two points in the square is r squared over 3. And again, let me illustrate this with the worst case scenario. So the best case scenario is the smallest distance is 0, 0. The worst case scenario is the smallest distance is r squared plus r squared, which is 2r squared. And we're sort of saying the average distance is actually very small. It's in r squared over 3. And here's the cool thing. You can actually generalize this to n dimensions with a hypercube or something. And what I calculated was is that the average distance then just becomes n r squared over 6 or something. Let me see. Uh, yeah, n r squared over 6. And this makes sense because for n equals to 2, this gives you 2 6 r squared, which is r squared over 3. And in particular, surprisingly, as n goes to infinity, the average distance blows up to infinity. So that's interesting. On average, on the infinite dimensional cube, uh, points are infinitely apart. Very, very surprising. Uh, all right, so if you like this little adventure in math and you want to see more math and more calculus, uh, please click like and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.